In this video, we're going to examine Saturn's rings and determine the orbital period for particles on the inner edge of uh, a substantial ring and on the outer edge of a substantial ring. This does not cover all the rings of Saturn, but is uh, the ones that are uh, notable, uh, one close to Saturn and one further away. So the D ring, so-called D ring, the ring, main rings are labeled with letters. Um, it's about 6,630 kilometers above the dense clouds of Saturn. And the outer edge of the F ring is about 79,560 kilometers above the clouds. You can obtain these numbers from a NASA website. Uh, the equatorial radius of Saturn, roughly 60,270 kilometers. This is um, you know, a little bit uh, in terms of the atmospheric pressure, the gas pressure uh, at this position and where this is located. Since gases just get thinner and thinner and thinner out into space, there's no definite top to the clouds of Saturn. Uh, but we're going to use this number. Uh, the mass of Saturn, 5.6834 times 10 to the 26 kilograms. And we're going to treat the ring particles as if they're moving in circles. This is a good approximation. Uh, we're going to calculate the period for the particles for both of those locations. So uh, a crude sketch of Saturn here, uh, D ring on the inside, F ring on the outside. I'm not showing the Cassini division and other divisions that are, are here. Uh, so it's just sort of a concept sketch. The D ring is close to the planet. That's the important part. F ring is further away. The way we're going to come up with a period is to use the concept that these objects are moving in circular motion. A centripetal force is required to make an object move in circular motion. That centripetal force is provided by the force of gravity of Saturn on a particle of the ring. So our expression for centripetal force, mass of the particle times the speed squared divided by the radius the distance to the center of Saturn is equal to universal constant of gravitation, mass of Saturn times mass of the particle, and again divided by this r squared. Um, important when you do this uh, expression in the centripetal force expression, this is not the mass of Saturn. It must be the mass of the object that's moving in the circular motion. Now you'll notice that the mass of the particle cancels. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit of ice or a big block of ice, um, rock, whatever have you. That's going to cancel. We're also going to cancel one factor of r here before too long. But you'll notice that the time is not part of this uh, equation. How can we insert the time variable, the period? Well, you should pick that up from the speed. The speed is the distance traveled divided by the time to do that uh, motion. So going around a circle, the circumference is 2 pi r, is the expression for the distance that the object travels. Capital T will be the period of the motion. We're going to be substituting for v squared. So this is going to get squared. It's going to reduce a factor of 4, a factor of pi squared, a factor of r squared, and dividing by t squared. And I am uh, canceling the r, as I said before, one factor of r. So there's an r gone here, and it cancels one factor of r over on the right side uh, eventually. So, so 4 pi squared, r squared, over t squared. And I see that I have failed to uh, cancel my one factor of r. So there we go. Um, so this r is no longer there, and one factor of r from r times r is no longer here, and the mass of the particle is no longer appearing in the calculation. So sorry about that little slip up. What are the r values? Well, it's not the distance above the clouds. We need the distance to the center of the planet. So I have to add for the d ring, 6630 is how far we're above the clouds. I have to add in the radius out to the outer edges of the clouds and uh, obtain 6.69 times 10 to the 7th meters for the radius. 
Be careful in problems like this if you're given a sort of altitude number in a gravity or centripetal force calculation, you must adjust that number to uh, obtain the distance to the center of the, uh, of the planet. F-ring, similar calculation, we have to add how far we are above the clouds to the radius of Saturn. And here is our solving for t squared. Multiply both sides by t squared. Divide by g and mass of the Saturn. Multiply by one factor of r. And I have the correct power on the r here. It's r cubed. And the 4 pi squared r cubed divided by g now and divided by mass of the Saturn. That's going to give us the period squared. So we have the numbers. It's time to go ahead and do the calculation. I'm doing them kind of side by side here. So for the d ring, the uh, value we put in for r is 6.69 times 10 to the 7th. That's uh, obtained up here. And that's going to be cubed. And we're dividing by capital G, gravitational constant, and by the mass of Saturn. And similar calculation over here, it's just that the r value is different. Uh, for the f ring, 1.3983 times 10 to the 8th meters. That gets cubed. You ought to pause the video now and pull out your calculator and see if you get that t squared is 3.11633 times 10 to the 8th and t squared for the f ring 2.8456 times 10 to the 9th. Then taking a square root, I came up with 1.7653 times 10 to the 4th seconds. I chose to find out how many hours that was and uh, do this conversion. There's 3600 seconds for one hour. so. A particle in the D ring takes about five hours to go around the planet. For the F ring, the particle takes almost 15 hours to go around a planet. This is correct that the particles closer to the planet move faster. Uh, their orbit times are smaller. I'd have you note here that the rotation for Saturn itself is 10.7 hours. So this D ring particle is moving around faster then the clouds are moving in terms of a, if you pick a landmark on the cloud feature of, of Saturn, uh, that cloud feature would take 10.7 hours to complete one trip around the planet. The F, or sorry, the D ring particle is only taking about five hours. The F ring is moving slower than the uh, uh, planet rotation. So. Again, check uh, my calculations with your calculator. Ask your instructor if you have questions on this. But we have able to uh, use the concept of centripetal force and the force due to gravitation and calculate the period for these particles moving around Saturn. If you'd like more physics and astronomy videos, visit these free websites, no registration and uh, get a list of the videos, how long they are, and there's a direct link to the YouTube video. Uh, if you do uh, find these YouTube videos uh, useful, please click on subscribe to my YouTube channel. Again, there's no cost for any of this.